This is glycogenolysis, which is the breakdown of glycogen. Glycogen is a storage molecule of carbohydrates, specifically of glucose molecules, in the liver and muscle cells of animals. And we're going to mobilize glucose all at once from the different branch points. So we're going to have multiple enzymes working on this storage molecule all at once. That's why it's highly branched. That's the function of being highly branched as opposed to amylopectin in a plant that's still branched but not as much as glycogen because a plant doesn't need to fight a bear or try to evade something really fast. We're going to be stimulating the breakdown of glycogen through a hormone called glucagon that is secreted from the pancreas. Insulin is going to be the antagonistic hormone to that. We also have epinephrine being secreted from the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands lie on top of the kidneys and they'll be secreting the epinephrine molecules that are going to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system's fight or flight syndrome or just if you just need energy, we will be stimulating glycogenolysis if your glucose is low. So glycogen, the first step, is going to cleave the glucose molecules and this cleavage is going to be via phosphorylysis instead of hydrolysis. The product of the first reaction is glucose 1-phosphate, so we're putting a phosphate on the C1 carbon of the glucose molecule. This is catalyzed from glycogen phosphorylase, which is going to be under metabolic control. Again, we're not using ATP to phosphorylate. We're using an inorganic phosphate ion that is in the cell. In the second reaction, we are going to be moving that phosphate from the C1 to C6. So it's an isomerization reaction and we get glucose 6-phosphate, which should look familiar to you. Glucose 6-phosphate is going to be the first reaction of glycolysis, and it's basically whenever the glucose enters the cell, it puts the ball and chain, known as a phosphate on C6, and so now we're skipping the first reaction of glycolysis, which, remember, cost us an ATP molecule. So now for glycolysis, if the glucose molecule enters from glycogenolysis instead of, say, from the bloodstream, then we can say that we have a three net ATP from glycolysis as opposed to a two net ATP if the cell, if the glucose enters the cell from the bloodstream. Why again? Because we're going to be skipping that first reaction in glycolysis that cost us an ATP. The second reaction is going to be catalyzed from phosphoglucomutase. Don't get that confused with phosphoglycerolmutase. When we get to the branch molecules of glycogen, the alpha-1,6, we're going to require a debranching enzyme. This is going to take care of the alpha-1,6 linkages. The rest of the molecule is an alpha-1,4, which the glycogen phosphorylase can easily take care of. So looking at this, here this is an alpha-1,6, these are all alpha-1,4s. When we get within four molecules of it, then we're going to use what is called a glycogen debranching enzyme. It's actually going to be two of them that are going to take the branch away and then a second one will come in and take, or hydrolyze this alpha-1,6 and get rid of it. glycogen in a branched molecule, a highly branched molecule, and it's all in the alpha-4 linkage of glucose monomers, and then the branch points are alpha-6 linkages, again, still glucose monomers. So what we need is the glycogen phosphorylase can only get within four monomers of a branch point. So what we need is debranching enzymes which will come in and they're going to remove the four and then they have another one that will remove the actual alpha-6 linkage by hydrolysis. Fructose one. Hey, hey. This is Brenda the Not So Good Witch signing off for today. See you next time on Dr. Bond's Science Theater.